Hey there, welcome back to Too Many Plugins, Ableton Edition. This is part three, we're discussing Operator. Part three of Operator. Part one, we talked about oscillators. Part two, we talked about the envelope and oscillator window. Part three, we're talking about the LFO window and what can it do for you. All good things. All good things, it loves you. All right, the LFO window loves you. So I don't want to make it weird. Did it get weird? It got weird. All right, let's, uh, let's get into it. Um, so here's our, again, default patch. We are not getting creative right now because we're just trying to figure out how this stuff be working. All right, I'm getting a little loopy, been doing this too long. All right, so let's turn it on. Step one. I know, crazy, right? What's going on, man? What's happening? Everything's feeling weird. Whoa. Okay. So this is, I'm going to say for me, the most annoying feature of an LFO. Like I can, I don't think I've really ever wanted that. Like I, that's not a sound that it, it, it does much of anything for me. Um, but there it is. Um, and what's happening there, the LFO is affecting the uh it's affecting the pitch um so this is uh I'm just from the top let's just talk about don't confuse these two different windows so here i've clicked on these are the oscillator windows right here let's make this sound a little more interesting um and they look very similar to the LFO window. So they the LFO has an ADSR envelope, um, has some, some similar controls, and so so just don't confuse the two. Um, and because I, I, it's embarrassing the number of times I've you know might have thought I was working on one and I was actually working on the other. And I'm like, why isn't this doing anything? Dang computers. Um, so so yeah, just watch out for that. Let's start with, since there's not very many buttons, let's start with the actual section right here. Um, so this is, uh, I'm, I'm not going to go into the theory behind an LFO. That's for somebody else's video. Um, the So you go watch that. And when you know what an LFO does, come back because I'm skipping over that. Um, so... So here's your, your different LFO shapes, all your kind of all the things you would expect to see. And then low, high, and sync. So um, this is this is kind of interesting. Uh, uh, like so low speed, right? And low, the L low only goes so fast. Then high, high speed is just slightly less than the fastest low goes. And then it quickly, like, when you get to the higher ends, like, it, you know, you've added another oscillator. You've added a fifth oscillator, basically, at that point. Um, and then um, sync is to sync with the music. Sync, sync, or sync with your tempo, rather. Which... Um, which is a good thing. I like to sync with my music. So yeah, I'm gonna do a little Laurie Anderson piece or something there. Um, R, the little R is to re-trigger the uh, LFO. So if you want it to start from uh, start over every time you hit the note, then or and you can actually hear it right there. It's picking up in the middle of a picking up in the middle of, of the of the wave shape. So um, something to be aware of. All right. So and then last one over here, amount. Um, how deep? How deep does it go? How deep is your love? Uh, so that's that's deep. How so? That's really affecting uh, the the sound. And it, it's 
it's most in it's most easily understood in the context of pitch or at least it is to me and then because once i understand it with pitch because you can hear that so clearly then you can start applying the lfo to different effects in different destinations which leads us to the next part so uh the window now let's talk about the window uh the envelope is how quickly you know the attack decay sustain release do you want the L the lfo to kick in as soon as the sound starts as soon as your note your instrument starts or do you want it to hang out for a minute before it comes in so there you go illustrated as such it's getting deeper so so you know i think you can probably think of some uh applications for that you're a smart person um then um release again this is another one where like i've had stuff hanging over and i'm like why does the sound keep going why does it keep messing with the sound i don't know what's going on why and it was because my lfo release was set to something and i didn't realize it um initial attack same as same as with the oscillators uh peak you know controls that little little thing there your peak on your attack sustain same thing and uh, it's a fun uh, to me it's a fun illustration of how all of these things work in the context of the lfo when you use pitch because you can just see you move you move it down all the way and you can see a direct correlation to how this thing actually works which i i just love that because it makes so much more sense to me um all of the loop settings like we talked about um in the prior tutorial those, you, you got those same things and this is i mean it can get hairy here when you when you get into this and start messing with your loop settings and you got your sync settings over here and so like let's see here we'll just just for illustrative purposes one eighth so it's not a percussion percussive sound but but it could be. And so then I'm, you know, I'm, I'm just goofing here. But this is a good illustration of kind of what I mentioned where you can make an entire drum loop like that. No drums involved, just an operator. I freaking love that, man. I love it. So, you know, uh, how cool is that? How cool is that? I mean, we really didn't do much there. All right. Um, uh, so I'm, I'm nerding out a little bit here. Um, so there's your sync, your repeat. Um, your end volume and in relation to what I mentioned earlier about the release, like the release plus the end, like in relation to uh, what I said about release and like not knowing what's going on in a patch, this end volume, like that's another one. Just uh, don't forget it exists because it can mess you up when you're trying to design some super awesome, clever patch. Okay, so um, so I think we've illustrated pitch lfo destination to pitch now and uh, so and you see right here uh so we've last one we looked at was in now we're going to look at our each oscillator right so you can let's turn on all the oscillators and let's change our shape to here so we can hear all the oscillators <laughs> All right, so um, 
the I wish that they gave you some alternatives for like how you could affect like I wish you could do like eighth, sixteenth, and and different LFO rates to each um, to each oscillator, but you know you can't always get what you want. So you have one LFO to work with, uh, so make it count because you also have all your loop functions in your individual oscillators. The ABCD and an FIL filter, right? So you want you want the LFO to affect the filter. This is the button you press, so it will do that. And you can hear our little our little percussion thingy going. Um, alternatively, and, and so I turned off C and D because I don't want to. Um, but right underneath there, you've got your destination B. So if you have a you ha you want it to affect something else you can you can you can't go all the way where you've got eight individual lfos um, for all kinds of different filters and all kinds of all your oscillate oscill four different oscillators and four different filters you can't go that far but it gives you a little bit of leeway and um this is where playing with all these settings is where it can really get interesting and weird um and fun uh if you want to create some very unique sounds play kind of cross-reference your LFO, your sync, and your, and your loop options, and your LFO, your loop options in your oscillators, and then get into the alternate destinations that you can send it to, where you can send the LFO back to itself or the filter or whatever it may be, and that's when stuff gets wild, as if it wasn't wild already. See for illustrative purposes only, because you can't with a sine wave uh, filter stuff. You know you don't really hear all that filter stuff that well. But now I've got my filter turned on. So this is pitch. Like if that's on, it's pitch. We'll get, we're gonna get into filters in the next uh, episode. Um, but you, there, just to illustrate the point of here's what the filter does: the LFO plus the filter. All right, we really went off on a tangent there. Sorry about that. Um, this is, if you can't tell, this is when I really start to enjoy playing with these things. Um, so, uh, um, rate to key and um, amount to velocity. Uh, so, let's turn off sync. And as you see, low and high rate to key works. Sync turns that off because sync is going to stay in time with the music. So um, depending on how low or high I am on the keyboard, it will affect the rate of the LFO. Um, so let's change the speed a little bit. Let's see. Let's see if we can just illustrate this. Okay, so you can hear it affecting the filter, right? Now let's jump up a few octaves. So much faster. And if you could probably tell, it's it's just doubling um, as you go up. It, it's just doubling in speed every time you jump up or down, uh, up an octave or, or having in speed when you go down an octave. Um, so that's that's that. Um, and then amount for velocity. Um, how much do you want the oscillator to affect the note based on how, on how hard you hit the key? So just just like your velocity levels on you know when you're playing on the keyboard. So like, let's turn this rate to zero. So I hit hard there, and then I hit soft. Hang on, let's bump it up. The 
amount so so the amount's pretty obvious there of how much you're getting getting it hard getting less filter like that's you can just hear how how much that filters affecting it clipping a little bit so you got to watch out when you're messing with filters and resonance and all that good stuff because it can get a little hairy all right so that's the lfo section there's a lot again there's a lot to cover um you got to play with it so um you will not go blind if you play with it too much go back to the patches we made from part one and then you went in and you messed with your waves and uh, and and hopefully all of these other settings. Now open those up again. You're going to create a third version. Mess with the LFO section on it now and uh, and and welcome to Wonderland because it's going to get silly. Thanks again for hanging in there for this one. It's complicated. It gets a little confusing, but I promise you once you got it under your belt, you're going to have a great time with it. Uh, next, we're going to talk about filters. And it's going to be so much fun. It's going to be the best. You're going to love it. Uh, thanks for watching. And see you next time. Cheers.